So I've had the Yeti for a little over a year, about 18 months now. And I picked it up, it was a fresh build that had been sitting for five years. So it was built by a fellow Ben and his dad uh, with the help of another friend of mine named Jason. And it hadn't been driven much. There was maybe a couple thousand kilometers on the build since it was done. This was originally a California two wheel drive truck. It was kind of the mix of three trucks put into one. So there was a California two wheel drive uh, frame and chassis and then there was an 83 4x4 pickup and then an 86 cab so it's definitely like a bit of a mishmash of different things but what you get is a uh, rust free registered as an 86 Toyota pickup that has a super solid two wheel drive frame and I'll show you some closer details of that. Uh, when I got it I already had a lot of the expensive stuff done which I really like. I'm still learning how to weld and to fabricate so for me getting something that had all of the hard stuff built already that I could just add my personal touches, add a few things to was really the best route for me. So it already had the solid axle swap when I got it. It already had the dual cases. It had the, most of the suspension, high steer. So it was a pretty built truck when I got it and that's what I, I really like that about it. It was also like 99% rust free and like reasonably clean. The interior was pretty gutted, so I've spent the last year fixing the interior, adding things to the interior to make it feel more complete, to make it feel kind of homey inside. It was on 38s when I got it, and um, it became a daily driver pretty quick, so the 38s didn't last that long, as sick as they looked. I really needed something that was more streetable. They were also bias ply, so it took about five kilometers for the flat spots to wear out every morning. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll take you around now and um, I'll show you some of the other details. So these are those Berg wheels I was talking about. Uh, these are JDM spec. They're legit two-piece wheels and I absolutely love the look of these. They're obviously dirty right now, so sorry about that. And I honestly, I like having a 15-inch rim. I like having the big sidewall. I think they look great. Obviously we got our manual hubs, we rebuilt everything last year, so everything works super slick. Rock sliders were built by a couple good buddies of mine, Will and Trent, Fabsol and Madhouse Fab. They did a wicked job of these. I've used them every time I've gone wheeling. They're super strong. They got a nice kick out for uh, bumping around trees, which is great when you have an extended cab. And my absolute favorite part about these is that they're bolt-on. So these are bolt-on sliders and there was no compromise in strength with going with bolt-on. And I love that. I had to do um, a little tiny bit of, uh, of uh, sanding and rust repair down here in the uh, cab corner a couple weeks ago. And if these had been bolted on, it would have been super awkward to get at. I wouldn't have been able to do a very nice job. And because, but because they're bolt-on, I just dropped the slider, six bolts, boom, boom. And uh, they had a super clever way so I didn't have to screw into my frame. So there were no drill holes. There's no holes in my frame from the rock sliders, but these are bolt-on, I love that. Custom bumper, this was built by Jason LaPointe at West Can Overland Off-Road Design. He's a wicked fabricator. Uh, this is a super old model of his. This is about um, maybe six or seven years old. Uh, so, I mean, his work is just absolutely on point, super slick. He actually did the rear bumper on Stacy's 4Runner. His work has improved so much, like even since he's done this, but I love the look of this bumper. I get lots of compliments on this thing and it's super solid. I've, I bash into trees all the time and never had an issue. With We've also got the little cheapy uh, Amazon 21 inch light bar. Um, I wanted something that was super low profile. I'm not a big fan of the uh, big light bars that just are obnoxious and stick out. They're on, on your roof or on your bumper. I don't like that. This thing is super sleek, super low profile, and it's bright as hell. It was a hundred bucks, and it's it's night it's night and day from the candles that uh, Toyota put in these things. So love this little thing. So obviously we got the solid axle swap. This is an 85 front axle that really badly needs some armor, a truss, and some knuckleball gussets on it, but it doesn't have that yet. But we got the OTT high steer with uh, FJ80, I believe they're EMF, EMF tie rod ends, uh, which are the best you can get in my opinion. 
Like, don't buy the $100 tie rod ends or, or God forbid, use the trail gear ones. Um, I had the trail gear ones and they were they lasted about six months and I started getting death wobble, replaced them with these and have had absolutely no issues since. Um, like I said, Marlin rebuild kit. Um, these are three inch leaf lift leafs. I'm not even actually sure what they're from. I don't know if they're like a rough bastard pack or they might be trail gear. I'm really not sure, but it's about a three to four inch lift leaf. Um, yeah, custom cross member. That's about it. It's a solid axle. It's freaking simple. Ugh. So this is that uh, crazy shackle that I was uh, mentioning earlier. It's actually a double shackle. So there's two shackles. It's not a boomerang shackle. There are two shackles there. And uh, these are 65 inch leafs from a Dodge 1500, I believe. And I have a one inch uh, block as well. And uh, yeah, so these are, there's definitely pros and cons to these. Most, a lot of people will say they're redneck and super sketchy because they can unload on you when you're going downhill or fold backwards. I've never had an issue with that. Um, my shocks limit the droop so I don't, they don't flip flop, uh, but I do get an extra six to eight inches of down travel just because of that. Uh, so that's the biggest pro. Um, the only other con really is that uh, I need to put a piece of rubber in here because sometimes when you're going down logging roads and there's a lot of corrugation, um, this will pop up a little bit and it'll it'll slap the leaf and just be a little noisy. Uh, but if, if I put a fat piece of rubber in there, that uh, should take care of that. So onto the rear, we've got a uh, typical trail gear rear bumper. I'd love to have a custom one one day, but I mean, trail gear, I got it for 250 bucks. Um, flare, flare canopy by Magic Toppers, high top, super nice uh, to have that headroom in the back. This is our backup setup when we don't have the wilderness on. I'm gonna kill this fly. This is our backup setup uh, when we don't have the wilderness on, but it works pretty mint. It's a little bit messy back here right now, so sorry. Um, nice rust free tailgate. So this is kind of the storage slash bed system. Am I the tools I was building things earlier? Um, so yeah, uh, four inch memory foam. Um, just built a plywood frame and platform. This is a prototype for something I want to later build out of aluminum when we have the wilderness on. But I needed something for our road trip a few weeks ago and this is what I came up with. So I've got one side uh, that's just, uh, just empty. Um, got an extra tent here, a life jacket. We were doing some canoeing. Um, I also have a tote that fits perfectly in here that's on wheels and I've got, just got a little screw here and then a string or wire attached to the tote so I can push the tote all the way to the back and we usually keep our dry food in there and then pull it back out uh, when you need it, slide it back in there, there now it's gone. And um, yeah, so on this side I've got a full length drawer that has a lock. A full length drawer built 90% out of plywood. Um, I've got these little sliding uh, table things on there so you can uh, get whatever you need. So we'll usually have the, uh, the stove on the end here um, and then you can use uh, this other one as a cutting board or whatever. You can flip this one uh, sideways if you want to cook on the back of the truck. And yeah, so the back here is just storage. I've got a ton of random stuff in here. Recovery gear, uh, flashlights, ratchet straps, uh, a bottle of wine. Because you know, overlanders are classy, right? So yeah, super happy with the drawer. Um, there's no expensive sliders on here. Uh, there's literally no sliders at all. It just slides on plywood and uh, this hardboard. This hardboard is like, it's pretty slippery. And uh, so I put hardboard on the bottom of the um, kind of frame, I guess, the skeleton of it. And then uh, hardboard on the bottom of this. So it slides pretty well. Um, it is a heavy drawer, so I mean, it's not as easy as a slider, but I also don't 
sacrifice three quarters of an inch on each side for a slider. And yeah, there's a little storage cubby on um, on each side. That side's got a shelf. Um, this side's the same same height, but there is uh, storage down the side here, which I just keep like an axe, machete, um, my breaker bar. Yeah, I mean like the drawer, I mean just plywood. It's not it's not too bad. Little shelf on this side with a sliding lid, so I've got strap in here, and I keep all my fluids and stuff in the bottom there. Inside, you're not gonna find anything too revolutionary. If you've been in a second gen Toyota pickup, it's gonna look pretty much like that. I did build a custom center console recently, which uh, holds my uh, Yeti water bottle perfectly upright or laying down. Uh, little storage thing in there for my little tire deflation thing, my wallet, um, just plywood, put a stain on it. Um, obviously I got the uh, the twin sticks here. I've got some aftermarket gauges, which I really wanted to put up here, but I found out that the water temp and the oil pressure cords or lines aren't long enough, so I gotta get some different ones. So for now, they're staying there. Uh, cell phone holder, RPM gauge, I mean, yeah. It's a pretty standard interior, but uh, I've got comfy seats and uh, armrest. So, I mean, geez, what else can you ask for? There's not a whole lot to look at under the hood. It's a 22 RE. There's a good chance you've seen one. This thing is basically stock with a top end gasket kit recently. It's It's got a header and an exhaust, a new air filter. <laughs> That's uh, really about it. Upgraded, uh, brake booster and that's pretty much it yeah so things I'd like to do in the future I need a winch um, I'd like to build a spare tire carrier for the back that's coming up pretty soon I've got to upgrade all my Rancho shocks which are super stiff and awful on the logging roads I got to upgrade all those to Bilsteins yeah I mean as is it does everything I need it to do I'd love to put some 37s on it as well I've, I've really wanted 37s in the last last few builds um, but finding a 37 for a 15 inch rim that isn't two thousand dollars is challenging hey it's editor matt here and i just want to say thank you so much for watching i know this isn't our typical type of content but i wanted to post a walk around video a lot of it's for me so i can look back on it in future years and see how far the yeti has come and uh, i'm sure there'll be more videos like this in the future if this gets a couple likes. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.